Today, I'm going to share a few tips that I've learned along the way. Come on, mega! Hey guys, welcome to a video that um, I've been wanting to do for a little while now. Participation has exploded in the last few months in iRacing, which is fantastic. But I notice there's a lot of people that I'm racing against who my presumption is there are a few things that they haven't been taught or they don't understand in iRacing. Um, I've been racing every day for three years almost in iRacing and um, I've learned a lot from um, and the awesome community um, that is within iRacing and um, yeah, things that I've learned along the way. So let's do this. Right, so first of all, this is one of the first videos that I've ever done that's been scripted. Usually it's raw and unscripted and there's lots of mumbling. So I've spent the last week writing down a whole bunch of notes and it started small, it grew, it grew, it grew, and I've decided to break it down into four categories. First of all, controls within the car and within the game. Second of all is research, something that I do a lot of. Um, third of all is practice, and fourth is the race. So we'll start off with controls. Um, within the game, um, there are a whole bunch of things that you need to do, which don't come standard when you first jump into iRacing. And first of all is the relative box. The relative box is the most important uh, feature in iRacing that you need to um, gauge the drivers around you, whether they be in a multi-class, whether they be a lot faster, someone who's crashed out up ahead, but they're making their way through the pack. Sometimes it's better to let them through safer <laughs> to let them through than fight them because they will push you off the track and keep going. <laughs> Second of all, yeah, you're looking left and right, your mirrors. Um, it's best to have as much um, visual information as you can. Also, your field of view. If you can't see properly out of your car, you're not going to drive fast at all. Uh, your delta box this is something that it's a tool that I use religiously and it helps me to get a lot faster and to um, better myself. Also setting up the talk buttons and finally in the game or out of it, setting up your spotter. So let's go into the game. And to start off, setting up your relative box. Now I'm using three screens, so there's a few things. If you're using a single monitor, your buttons will be in the top right here, but mine's all the way over here. Go to your options, setting up the relative box. I'm gonna skip right ahead to here, go to your black box controls and go to relative box. Set a button on your keyboard, set it on a peripheral device, set it up on your wheels, probably um, the most convenient. But it, that is something that regardless of where you are in the black box, that will always go back to your relative. It's very, very important. Um, when you first jump into a car and you have to calibrate controls, part of the calibration asks you to look left and right. Um, if you've rushed through that just to get the pedals working, um, you can change it at, at a later date. And it's just a matter of clicking on here and setting left and right. Now I'm tr going to try not to be too descriptive here. We want to narrow the video down <laughs> as short as possible. One other thing is to always um, do use custom controls for this car. Every car has its own needs and wants and ways you calibrate it. If you have this unticked, it makes a global setup um, and you might find that a setup for one card doesn't work for the other. So click on use custom controls. Um, also changing the way the car changes gears. There's four options there. I'm currently on auto blip for the Porsche 718. Setting up the virtual mirrors. Where is the virtual mirror? It is somewhere. I actually can't find it.
But anyway, when you're in the car, you'll see this black box, like there, I'll go back to the relative. I think there's about 10 different pages that you can have. When you get to graphics adjustments, you got V mirror FOV. You can actually adjust how close, you see how the car behind me is getting closer and closer and closer. And you can set that further away. Your driver field of view is, the base is here, 149 is what I've got it set at, set at. But the best way is to go back into options, graphics, and what you do is you need to tell iRacing exactly the dimensions of your monitors, the distance from where basically where your eyes are and where you're, you're racing to the, um, to the screens, the bezels, everything. Um, that will give you a number. For me, it's uh, given me 149, which I think has maybe been adjusted and I've actually fixed it myself. One other way is to pause a replay of yourself in the cockpit view. It can be anywhere in the cockpit view and press control F12. Control F12 will bring up a screen camera edit. And if you're in the cockpit view like that, you can then, you can adjust a lot more accurately where you want to sit in the car. You can adjust the angle. Um, and you find something that suits you. I found, uh, for example, in the Formula 3, um, I felt sitting a little bit higher and a little bit down, I was able to look over the car and see the wheels a lot better. Um, and then once you've found the perfect seating position, you go to save car and car.cam is the default. Save it and it will overwrite your standard field of view. Now, what else have we got? Setting up your Delta box. So jump into the car. And this box here is your Delta box. I have mine on Session Optimal. That's, um, I was taught by the Great Mint car a long, long time ago. Much better than the Session Best Lap, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And just get a button to cycle through all of the different Deltas jump out of the car, go back into the options menu, and you'll see options down here, cycle split delta display. This will <clears throat> show you in real time how fast and how slow you're going. Uh, one other thing for the talk buttons, go to sound. It's really important if you don't want to be chit-chatting with people on track, it annoys a lot of people, but there are times in the racing where you really need to communicate with someone. Um, basically, if you knock them off the track, there's nothing wrong with an apology. You can quickly say, sorry, move on. And you can actually avoid repercussions later on. I mean, you, you can take it too far and abuse people, but just remember <laughs> um, swearing in iRacing is an offense. And if you get reported, um, you can potentially be banned from the service. So I have a push to talk button on my steering wheel. I have a rotary knob on my steering wheel, which can make the voices louder or quieter. If you find that um, people, it just you can't quite hear them, especially in car with the engine noise, you can turn it right up or you can have a button to mute everyone altogether. A lot of people race with the uh, talk off um, and they press the push to talk button just quickly so that their name comes up on the screen and there's an acknowledgement of thank you for letting me buy or, or something like that. Uh, spotter. I actually don't use the spotter within iRacing. So I don't know where the spotter is, but there is an option for the spotter. You can have the standard iRacing spotter, but I find Crew Chief is much, much better. Um, Crew Chief 
is an add-on application which works in the background and you can have it for a range of different simulators. It pretty much covers them all. You can set the different voices, um, play with it yourself. And if your name is in this massive list of names, he can, uh, he can talk to you um, and say, G'day, Glenn. How are you, mate? You're doing well. Come on, Glenn. You're doing terrible. You'll watch a lot of my videos in the past. Crew Chief is constantly talking to you. But the most important thing that Crew Chief does is when you're racing, he tells you when you're just by. So when you've just overtaken somebody, he'll tell you, say, clear left or clear right. And that way you can jump back in front of the car and push forward. If you are halfway through a corner and you don't quite know if you're past, you're giving your opponent a lot more room and you're compromising your own corner. If you know that you're past, you can get back on the racing line and, and push forward. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description down below. and. Yes, that is an amazing thing. Very, very customizable. You can actually talk to him and tell him to you know, put fuel in your car or t he'll tell you what times people are doing, whatever you want, the weather, the time, the works. All right, so that's the basics, the controls. Let's have a look at the uh, next slide, which is research. Now I do a lot of research before a race. Um, it's easy to learn on track, but if you're getting in other people's way and destroying their races, I'll be honest, you, you uh, develop a reputation. Um, you can really um, sticky beak and uh, look for drivers and look at their records. And there's a lot of things that you can do within iRacing. I find personally, I want to check it out before I get on track, uh, learn other people's mistakes. So what... I do to start off with is check out YouTube. Now you can go to my my YouTube if you like. Uh, I have a whole bunch of track guides for the Formula 3 Sprint. Go check them out. Got to plug your own channel. But there's other people. For example, Dave Cameron is amazing. He's extremely fast and he has some fantastic tips on how to um, uh, learn the track, learn the car and learn how to make the most uh, time-wise out of the car. There's another bloke, David Sampson. Um, he's new on the scene, but he has a lot of track guys for the Skippies, the BMW M8 and the F3, but also people like uh, Jimmy Broadbent, uh, Matt Malone. Just watch their videos, and you can actually watch their footwork because they've got foot cams, and watch how they change gears, how they push forward into a corner, do they stomp on the throttle, are they progressive? And you can learn a lot from other people before anything else. So the first thing I'll do at the start of a week is I'll go to the results page before I jump into a practice session. I'll go down to, this shows you all of the splits and all of the races. I'll just go to the previous race I'll click on this tab here, which will bring up the results of that previous race. Uh, fairly high strength of field. But what you want to see is what the fastest guys are doing in the top splits. And the guys in the top splits are roughly between 34 and 36. 134 and 136. I... In the car, I think I'm down to a 35.7. Not that good in the Porsche at the moment, which you'll see in previous videos. After that, go to the world records. This is There's so much information on the website. If you're using beta UI, iRacing beta UI, um, it's not quite there yet. This website's been going for a very, very long time and it's really in depth. <clears throat> so one way to check out the best times and you can compare your times against other people is that'll show the first page is overall all round um, the uh, all time records for that car and that, that track but if you want to get specific because setups change track conditions change and updates change um, go to season the current year the current season and then click on go and that will actually update it. So the world record for this week 
these guys are in the 33s and have a look at that. There's a lot in the 33s. What this does, it gives you a, a, a gauge, a time um, that you can aim for. Me at 484, um, not the best. I've only done one race and I got down to a 36.4. But after a bit of practice and a help from Overclock, thanks buddy, I'm down to a 35.7. So I am progressing, but I'm doing that by learning as well. Okay, so after that, go into a practice session. which I'm currently in. Now this practice session has been going for an hour and 20 minutes almost. And have a look at the results. Now this person, Simone Maria Marcino, is down to a 33.7. And if you want to learn how the fast people are doing it, just double click on their name. Double click on the bottom left of your screen go to laps and that shows all the laps that they've done for this session. You can see they're down to a 33.7. You can also see that is on their sixth lap in that stint and then they went back in the pits. <clears throat> so I've got the sound off at the moment, but what you can do is basically stick your beak and see how they're gaining time, how they're attacking every single corner, what gears they're using, um, the the dashboard itself only gives basic information, time, gears, all of the other things like the, the engine temperatures, tire pressures and things like that. They won't give you that information in a replay um, unless it's yours. And then what you do is just watch the lap. It's pretty simple. You watch how they're attacking the lap what lines they're taking and you can see like that the car's half off the track they're using a lot more track than I am and that is the they're in a higher gear than me so yeah there's a, a hell of a lot to learn from those those people what I've learned in iRacing is there's always a bigger fish. Always a bigger fish. And the last thing I do before I race is actually spectate a race. I'll actually watch um, a race. From a spectating a race, you can actually watch every single person's qualifying time, um, their qualifying laps, which you can't do in an official race. And you can also watch the race from any camera angle, cockpit, TV one, any angle you like, <clears throat> and just see how the guys are racing. Um, the a big difference between practice and racing. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. So you go to the top of the screen. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a shortcut tab in, um, in my browser, but if you want to find it, you go to find official races, Watch Ghost Crew Spot. Click on that. And I mainly do road, but you can do any sort of um, category within iRacing. So you go to road and it brings up this page of all the current races. You can include qualifying and time trials as well. But to shorten the list, just have this race box crossed. And you can go down and you'll see the list of all the sessions. Um, there's a lot in the MX-5 at the moment. We'll use that as an example. The very first session ID, that's the top split. So they're the people within that split. This arrow should be green, but because we're in a practice session, you can't join two sessions at a time. You click on that and a box that comes up will say watch. <coughs> click on the watch and a new screen will come up. When it's uh, registered to spectate, it'll come up watched in green here, and then it'll actually take you into their session and you can spectate and um, analyze a lot of things. In the Formula Sprint, I use it to check out how people, uh, the pole sitter is um, doing the rolling start. Some people stick right on the safety car and boost it. Other guys play games and you just want to see what sort of games that those guys are playing 
So you can be wary of it. If you're qualifying mid-pack, a concertina effect within a rolling start, especially in F3, could destroy your race before you've even started. So knowing what games are these guys are playing, and when you're spectating a race, you can fast forward, rewind, slow motion, you can really analyze what games that these guys are playing and you get a real heads up. <coughs> so I do quite a bit of research before I do any racing. I've learned that from my Bumps and Bends video. Uh, the I do a weekly track guide and I do a lot of research to see what guys are up to before I even cut a lap. So once you've done your research, practice. Now the first thing is practice, practice, practice. But because you've done that research, you're learning the proper ways to attack the track. If you don't know the best way to attack a track and you just jump on, you start developing bad habits. So with all of that research that you've done, you can actually put it into practice. When you get into a race, uh, I think the first one that comes up is all-time best. Put it to session optimal. Your all-time best and your session optimal could be vastly different due to iRacing upgrades, the track temps um, and tyre models and things like that really affect your, your times. You could be a lot faster or a lot slower. Um, and using the session optimal as opposed to the session best, take you into the car. <coughs> I haven't done a lap in this session, but my all time best <coughs> is a 135.8. My all time optimal is a 135.5. So that's with the setup and the skill set that I've got at the moment. The delta that comes up on the screen, which it'll come up as a red bar or green, hopefully, will be a 135.5. That is faster than I can do. If I go I do all time best lap, the delta that comes up will be for the 135.8. Now there's three tenths of a second there. And on my best lap, I didn't reach my full potential speed wise. So what the all time optimal does is show you in real time what your potential is pace wise for a lap. And you can actually see very quickly where you're gaining time and where you're losing time. You can also have optimal sector. Um, Thomas Jordan, uh, the pro Mazda King, he also does a lot of track maps. I think TJ Sim Racing, look him up. He actually uses optimal sector, but personally I scroll across to session optimal and that shows with the uh, tire temps, the, 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 the rubber bedding into the track, everything. Um, it shows the best for that session. Um, so yeah, also pressing F3, see I'm on the graphics adjustments there. I've got a shortcut link that takes me straight to relative. I can press the, the pit speed limiter, which I've assigned on the steering wheel and, and I'm off. So when you're in the practice session, first of all, focus on your overall pace. Just cut laps based on what you've learned. When you've cut a few laps and you've, you've bedded the tires in and the car's starting to feel uh, grippy and you can start to attack, you'll find an overall time. Then focus on individual sectors and your session optimal will show you exactly where you're going wrong and then try and piece it together over a full lap. Once you've done that, focus on individual corners. Like the uh, one sector could be one corner, it could be 10 corners uh, like at Nürburgring. So you'll see pretty quickly and then each lap, just have a look at different ways you can attack it. Um, 
Practice race starts. I've actually got that in twice. <laughs> uh, park up on the track somewhere. Get your clutch and throttle positions right for a standing start and figure out the best way to start the race. There's nothing worse than you've put all of this effort in. Then you, uh, you grid up and then all of a sudden the light goes green and you're in the wrong gear. I've seen a bloke in reverse and he just slammed in the, into the bloke behind him and two races were ruined and he was like, oh, sorry, I was in the wrong gear. Practice. Practice your race starts in a practice session. Um, lastly, find your track limits. Safety rating does not count in, in iRacing in a practice session. You can do whatever you like. You can practice the jumps at the end of Conrod Strait on Bathurst. Get that right. Um, you can do whatever you like. But what it will show you is when you go off track. So every track has its own um, length uh, version of track limits. Some you can really ride the curb and some you can barely touch the curb. So find where the limits are on that track and you'll have a lot less incident points at the end of the race. And yeah, you'll actually find a lot of time if one particular circuit will give you a little bit more more corner than what you otherwise thought you could have finding that in this in the practice session is where you're going to make up a hell of a lot of time so finally let's go to the race once again put your relative up just put it make sure that relative is there i notice there's a lot of people i don't think they have their relative on and they just don't know what's around them they haven't got their mirrors set up properly maybe their field of view is wrong just get it set up. The other thing is your spotter is your best friend. Not only is he going to tell you times and everything, but after the first sector of, of the race on lap one, he's going to tell you how far or how many cars are, are in a pack, like when you're side by side, and he'll actually tell you when you're past. And it's so important, especially on lap one, two or three, knowing where you can actually cut in. There's nothing worse going two by uh, side by side in a corner. You want to go line astern and attack at the following corner. You're all going to slow each other down. You end up in a pack that concertinas, other people crash out because of your mistakes, and you can really use your spotter. He's your best friend. He is in your ear and telling you exactly what's going wrong. And it's a computer program. He doesn't get it wrong. Um, a human spotter, like for example, in uh, over in America with iRace, uh, sorry, with IndyCar and NASCAR, they're people, they make mistakes, they're very, very good at their job. But this is a program that is 100% correct. Now, when you're qualifying, use your qualifying outlap just to heat up the tires, don't be too aggressive. There's a new qualifying. Uh, rule system that's coming in that if you do burnouts, if you do donuts, if you do anything aggressive or like what they did in the Porsche championship, people were running their nose up to the wall and just burning their tires up to heat them up on, on the outlap. Do it properly. Find a way to heat up the car, not too aggressively. Some tracks you don't have enough time to get a second lap in uh, because the track's too large. So just do what they do in real life, weaving, hard braking, and then use your first qualifying lap as a banker. Go for it. But personally, I use like a 95% pace um, for a banker lap. I probably leave a little bit on the table, but what it does, it gives you a, a qualifying time. Um, if you go for it on your first lap, you've only got one lap to get it right. And if you make a mistake on your second qualifying lap, then you start at the back of the pack and it's not always best to start at the back of the pack. So using the first lap of qualifying as a banker lap, use the second one to go for it. You've already got a time. It could be better, but you're, you're there or thereabouts. If you find that you're right up there, some people just get out and they go, right, that's enough. Mic drop. See you later. I'll wait for the race. But Quite often that second qualifying lap gives you the opportunity to really, really cut in hard. 
And finally, the race is up to you guys. Look, just go for it. What I'm learning, and people who've been watching me a long time will find that I'm I'm quite fingertippy in a race. I'm like, oh, oh, don't hit me, don't touch me, just go for it. Throw a nose in, have a look at my race from Sunday in the Radicals. I just thought, bugger it, I'm going for it. And my racing quality went up 2,000%. I was so much better with my confidence then that first couple of laps, um, I've been lectured many times by Dean Woods. Just go for it. Just throw a nose in. You're losing so much time in the first three laps by going, oh, don't hit me. By the time the field cleanses, you're a whole heap of positions back and you're 30 seconds away from the leader. You're not going to make that up for the rest of the race. Finally, something that I learned the hard way is don't get obsessed with your eye rating or your safety rating. I got up to 3,000, almost 3,500 eye rating. And then I had a lot of unfortunate races and my eye rating plummeted. I think I lost 500 in a week 13. And it really got to me. I don't have a lot of time to <clears throat> race after race after race after race. Really only have time to do one race. So, um... I actually dumped all of my high rating and ever since I did that, I just don't care. I am where I am and roughly between 2200 and 2600 is, is my place at the moment. You'll find yourself, you could be 5000 high rating. If you get that high and you've been pumping the one car, don't get upset by experimenting. Eye racing is a really a vast service and it offers so many awesome experiences. Just don't worry about losing 98 I rating in one race because you've tried something new and you're not as good as you were in your first car. Learning, always learn. The experience you can get from I racing is awesome. And it, for me personally, what Mick says, spreading the butter very thin across the bread, you can really enhance your experience. Every car handles different. Every category has different kinds of racing, like touring car racing or open wheeler racing or oval racing. Just experience it. Don't worry about your I rating. Your safety rating, you're only going to lose that if you go below 1.0 where you will lose your license. Um, safety rating and I rating, especially lately, is not necessarily how good a driver you are or safe a driver you are, it's actually a number that represents the consequences of your previous races. Like I said, I made this video because I've had quite a few of my races ruined by people who just haven't been in the service long enough to understand that when you knock that bloke out, you've destroyed his race and you've probably destroyed your own. So just enjoy the service. Don't get obsessed with numbers. Don't get obsessed with licenses. Really, the highest license you need is a B license, unless you want to drive an F1 car. There's only one car eligible for the A license. It's just a pretty blue picture that people like to show off and they don't like to lose it. So don't get obsessed with those those things. So I hope I haven't gone on way too much. I hope it has helped you. But um, yeah, feel free to check me out at the, the links over there, especially the YouTube channel. That's the one I spend the most time on. But more importantly, if you want to chat or if you want to have a gas bag to the boys or have some sort of contact, go check out my Discord page. There's a link down below. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on track. I hope it didn't go for too long, but there was a lot to cover. <laughs> this list kept growing and growing and growing through the week. Like I said at the start, if you've got any comments uh, or any ideas or th things that would help other people to experience iRacing better, throw a comment down below. Um, but only after you've pressed that subscribe button. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye.